Welcome to the Real Estate Asset Management Podcast brought to you by Break of Day Capital. The show focuses on educating syndicators and apartment owners on how to build systems and manage their properties more efficiently to become a best-in-class operator. 100% straight talk. Let's jump in. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Asset Management Podcast. I'm your host, Gary Lipsky with Break of Day Capital. Be sure to join our Facebook group, Asset Management Mastery, where we have a great community of thousands of like-minded individuals sharing resources and best practices. Choosing the right insurance coverage for multifamily properties isn't that complicated, if you know who to talk to. At the Garzella Group, we're uniquely qualified to help you navigate the range of policy choices you have, and we're committed to saving you 30% in the process. We do intensive market research and have nationwide relationships, so we can find coverage other insurance brokers simply can't. We should talk. Go to quotenow.biz, and we'll start the conversation. Today on the podcast, we have my friend Jason Perro. Jason, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and what you do. Sure. Thanks, Gary. Thanks for having me. Um, Jason Perro, uh, born and raised in Erie, Pennsylvania. Uh, small city located kind of equally an hour and a half from Pittsburgh, Buffalo, and Cleveland. So what you know, you could say we're a submarket of all of those. Uh, been investing in real estate for 21 years. Uh, own uh, about 2,800 units, uh, some of which my wife and I own ourselves and, and, you know, with no partners and then have quite a few syndications uh, throughout the country as well that we're key principal or, or uh, general partner on. Nice. And um, do you do like value add? What kind of properties um, do you focus on? A little bit of everything. Um, you know, we, uh, I love the value add. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity to, you know, to, to make additional equity and my wife owns a construction and, and design company. So um, her expertise is, taking the, the bland and old apartments and making them, you know, making them pop. And, and she's an integral part of our, uh, of the value add team. So, um, so love doing that. Um, and that's kind of been a strategy the whole, you know, 21 years we've been in the business. Uh, but we'll, we'll, you know, I do like the turnkey class A stuff when I can come across it because, um, you know, it just, it's, it's easy to easy, just, a lot, in my mind, a lot easier to run too. So. That's nice to have a partner under your roof that does construction and design. I mean, that is a perfect, perfect marriage. The dream team, except we, we literally never stop talking about real estate. <laughs> so it's, we've been married 20 years and that's, that's just how it is. But um, no, it, it is, it, it has some challenges having your spouse as your partner, but, um, but the benefits are amazing. I mean, it really, you know, we really make a great, a great team. I'm sure. I'm sure. So today we're going to talk about pivoting. It's it's a really important topic. Tell me about a recent project you had where you where you had to pivot. Sure. So we have a project in a uh, number of projects in in a submarket of Cleveland that, uh, and one that we picked up a year ago that um, is a very strong value add. Um, old owner, his his parents had started the business 60, 70 years ago, and you know he had had inherited the business so. The, properties were fairly run down, just kind of updates as they needed over the years. And so we have huge budget to go in and, and renovate, you know, renovate units. Um, you know, but we built our budget out a year ago when everything cost 20% less. And, and so we've had to get really creative in terms of sourcing materials, sourcing contractors, um, and then the scope and level of the work we want, we want to do. So um, we've really had to change our operations in real time uh, and this submarket in Cleveland has a lot of seasonal, um, you know, um, huge component of it uh, of, of the renters is medical students and law students, and then young, you know, young doctors, young lawyers. And so there's a season when they'll come in and, and leave. So it's a huge amount of activity at one period of time. And, and you know, we we made some decisions to, um, you know, instead of call it a flat fifteen thousand dollars per unit, which was the original business plan to kind of adjust that and take some buildings and make them extra special and put that, you know, that maybe that double the budget and then take some buildings and cut that budget in you know, a half or a third. Um, because we were, we found that just by say fresh countertop and appliances, we were able to pop the rent in certain buildings and other buildings. You're like, 
oh my gosh, we got to pour a brand new foundation. So we, you know, we re and replumb the entire hundred year old building. So we had to, you know, sink some more funds into that. So, so it's a real time pivot. Um, a lot of money flying around. Um, myself, along with another partner, have all the risk in the loan. Um, so that's a good part. Is as a general partner, I have the risk. So I, I and you know, we understand what uh, uh, what's at stake. But um, but you know, we, I, I think it's nice when you're involved on the construction side of things too that you can make those decisions in real time and 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 not uh, not have to wait a long time to, to affect that change. That was something we were able to do pretty quickly. Nice. So tell me a little bit about the the structure, because is is it is it um, you know just you and your partner on these deals? Is it syndicated? What kind of loan it is? Because there are all these different factors that will affect how you know how you can pivot or not. You know, it make it makes things that much more difficult. So it's a syndication. It's a that particular deal is 187 units. Um, our we acquired it for 13.2. Had roughly a three million dollar uh, value add budget. Um, that, that included contingencies for inflation and things like that. Um, so we did plan ahead for the unknown. I mean, we came out of coming out of like all the COVID shutdowns and all these crazy things. So, so we had anticipated some changes, um, but we have a general partnership that's um, made up of a few parties. Um, so, you know, we, we own about a, a third of the general partnership and, and that, uh, that deal is, um, a 50 50 split with with the lps um so technically i mean we, we have some partners who are some entities and things like that so um you know we, we technically own the majority of the deal uh, so that allows for some decision making but but it's a you know with a general partnership it's a decision by committee so um it, it the, the asset management meetings can can get um they can get stressful right because we're we're talking about you know, investors who are ex expecting a return on their investment and how do we communicate challenges? And, you know, you want to communicate all the successes, but you have to communicate the challenges in a way that they understand. And they may not always understand it. You know, they're, well, where's my distribution? Where's my distribution? Um, but I think, you know, the, the, when we pivot, you know, we, we want to, at least in my mind, I feel like, you know, being on the offense as opposed to defense. You know, like um, we, you know, in, in a certain sense, I think a lot of people, you know, we're punching ourselves out of the corner. Um, but in this case, I think anticipating challenges, understanding that, hey, let's, let's, let's pivot ahead of schedule, make sure that we're not stuck with a certain level of vacancy. Um, so, with, you know, this portfolio turns over roughly 50% a year. So on 187 units, you have 95 vacancies or so in a two month window, you know, like right now, I mean, I can handle that over the course of a year. So it's a really short window where all these move outs and then you're trying to do now, fortunately it's a three, three to five year business plan. You know, we're trying to exit refinance in three years. It's a bridge loan. Um, you know, and so we have, we have a certain debt coverage ratio we have to make at year one. And then we're, we're knocking on the door of year one. So, you know, if, if you were to look at it real time today, it, it would appear to be a bloodbath because the occupancy is 50%. But, at the same token, you know, my, my management, we also manage and self-manage this um, or manage it internally. So my management team leased 16 units over the last two days. So you can get really afraid of this amount of vacancies in, in a short amount of time, but in two days, they, they have, you know, 16 deposits to hold at, at above our target rent. So we know that we've got proof of concept. We know the plan's working. We just have to keep everybody motivated and firing on all cylinders to, you know, to make, to, to execute it. So, um, you know, these, these are big boy and big girl games sometimes, and, and it's just knowing what we're getting into. So it can be stressful, but at the same time, I think if you, if you have a plan and, and you communicate clearly, have a motivated team, um, you know, it, it'll get done. Uh, I think for, for me in this deal, you know, owning the management company has a set of challenges, but I think that's where we add the value is that if it was a third party company, I don't know if I would trust that they would have the same level of urgency to fill the units that, that I do because I'm on the loan and I own the management company. So I have to perform. Right. Yeah. I love, you know, when you said, you know, being on offense versus being defense, you know, being proactive, you know, that's so important. Um, having the, the cash reserves and the wherewithal to make that pivot and not, and, and not wait for things to get hope for things to get better because that's not, this is, you know, this is like you said, this is, 
you know, big boy business. It's not, you can't just wait and, 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 and sit back and, and hope. Um, and, and, and communicating the challenge too is so important. Your investors, I'm sure appreciate that. And whether, you know, all of them understand, you know, so be it, but at least you're saying, you know, Hey, these are struggles. We all face struggles. We all, there are, nothing goes perfectly. And, you know, it's okay to tell an investor, Hey, you know, th these are, this is what happened. You know, this is a solution or this is what we're trying and, and we're going to get there. And, and investors for the most part should be okay. It's, it's when syndicators hide from problems that that's, that's a real, real issue that, that I, I know some of my, my friends as LPs I face and it's, it's just, it's so frustrating. It's, it's funny. I think I, I, I've thought about it a lot lately with the markets changing and, and um, I mean, been doing this for a long time. I know you have as well. I mean, I, I think the thing is if a deal has to work so precisely for it to succeed, you know, meaning you're turning X amount of units per month. And if, if you just, if that plan goes off course and the deal suffers, I mean, I think that, you know, that that's a challenge. I mean, I mean, investors have to understand that every business is going to face challenges. I mean, whether you're invested in Tesla or Pfizer or, you know, you know, Goodyear or whatever that whatever the company is, there's going to be daily challenges and having a you know having a solid asset management team in place to address those challenges so that when things go off course, you know we're able to correct and, and there's going to be ups and downs and in betweens but over a five or ten year period, we should be able to to make the deal perform the way we you know the way we projected it to. Yeah, and it, and it all starts in your underwriting by having buffers and and not not squeezing every last inch out of the, every last penny out of the deal and, ha and having, you know, a conservative rent growth, conservative, you know, CapEx budget, having extra, you know, for, for things and uh, just having all these different levers, then you'll be way ahead of the game when it's over. And even worst case scenario, if, if everything went against you, you'd still be, you know, still be able to survive you know, um, during, you know, something that is, that goes awry, you know? Right. I agree. 100%. What, uh, what are some of the mechanisms that you do in your underwriting so that you are able to pivot, you know, and, and deal with, you know, setbacks and curveballs? Sure. I mean, we usually, uh, we'll take three to four years to execute our rent increases and kind of work backwards from that. Um, so try to be fairly conservative in, in year one, knowing that these rent increases aren't going to happen on day one. It's going to be month 12, you know, and so that, that you're going to see that first year increase. So really having to make a conservative year one, um, you know, we'll raise, you know, we'll raise extra money, um, you know, on the, on the case of that $3 million CapEx plan, you know, the original budget was maybe 2.2 million and we raised an extra 800,000 for contingency, like, cost of goods was going up. I mean, we didn't realize how dramatic it was in some cases, you know, with, with what some contractors are charging and the cost of kitchens and countertops and everything else. But um, so we try to, we try to just build in an extra 20% generally at a minimum um, of what we think, uh, because there's always the unknown. I mean, we might budget say $10,000 per unit in upgrades, but when you start pulling things out and you, things you couldn't have uncovered in your due diligence, um, that would add time, um, you know, time to the project. And, and I think, you know, now, you know, the other thing we do is, you know, when we're looking at bridge loans, I'll pay a higher rate and lock that rate in for a few years and, and maybe, maybe rates drop at some point, but that was our strategy pre, you know, rates going to the low threes. I mean, that, that was like, that, and that's funny money. That was bonus time. I mean, everybody, we love that, but um, rates are, to me, they're still at a historic low. I'm um, sure there's uncertainty and everything else, but I, I like having a little bit of, hey, if I have to pay a little more, but I have like in my mind, like three years, three or four years of certainty, that um, that gives me that peace of mind knowing that we can worry about the business plan and not worry about the rates fluctuating every month and payments payments jumping up dramatically and things like that. Yeah, I fully agree. And, and, and buying a cap where you know, you're not going to utilize because it's three and a half, you know, uh, above, you know, the strike price. And, and then you've got, you know, you're just throwing money away. Um, so, we, yeah, we just we just on, on a deal we're closing next week, we got a nice fixed uh, uh, rate. And then 
to get the proceeds that we really wanted, we used, we used MESDET. So the blended rate is still way below where the SOFA curve is going to. Um, and we love that, love that uh, loan. We're, we're looking to do it on, on, on our other deals as well. So at the end of the day, you did your pivot. What, what um, KPIs or what are you looking for to know that was successful? I know you mentioned hitting higher rents, but like, are, do you have some measurements that you're saying, wow, we did, I'm, I'm so glad we pivoted? Yeah, I think, the, I think for us, the biggest thing is um, looking at revenue is, is the ultimate driver, uh, at, least, at least in the, the case of the value add, you know, are we reducing expenses, you know, hitting revenue. And so for us, we're looking at, are we trending to where we need to be at at year one? So, you know, we'll, we have some awesome underwriters on our team and they'll, they'll map this thing out by the month. Um, but that level of precision doesn't allow for error. And so what, what, we, what we're looking for is that, you know, let's look at this, you know, we, we, we're on this thing every week on asset management calls and we're, we're in the weeds, but are we at where we need to be at in a year? And, and so for us, when we map it out and we look at, okay, we'll be at 100% occupancy by the end of the summer, in the case of this particular asset, we, you know, we needed to be at a thousand dollars a month, um, a month of average rent by year two, and we'll be at that, we'll be above that at the end, at the end of year one. So for us, we're like, hey, we're ahead of schedule. So where we were behind schedule and, and we pivoted, we'll actually be ahead of schedule, and we'll have extra money to invest in the properties, and, I, and then that allows us to kind of play on offense. So it's just as opposed to feeling like we're, we're fighting our way out of the problem. So, um, so that's really just the, for us in that particular case, it's the revenue and occupancy and saying, oh, the other big piece of this was that we were going to have two dozen vacant units at, every, at any given time. So the, the thought would be that, you know, we'd have these vacant units, they would sit vacant for 60, 90 days, you know, well, 30 to 60 days and re-rent them. But based on the season, that, the rental seasonality, um, leasing season in that submarket of Cleveland, um, we've shrunk that vac that desired vacancy to 10 to 12 vacant units at a time in, in non-leasing season to catch up to that lost revenue. But additionally, there's a lot of value add that we can do while residents still live there. And now that we have these amazing contractors on site, we can go in and do certain value add things while the residents still live there. If you have a really good crew, you can whip out a kitchen in a couple of days and so we have some strategies around that too, where, where the work might not be as involved. So we can kind of be ahead of the curve next year too and, and, and execute the, the construction plan a little sooner. Nice. So, you, so you're doing some units while the residents are still living there? Certain things like, so right. uh, not, not a full gut, right? There's no way to do a full gut. Right. Some of it, but um, for instance, one, one person that was going to leave, um, they're in medical school. They went home for the summer had a little bit of a break. Um, they said, "Hey, we're gone until August. Uh, we'll pay your, you know, your new rate, but can we get that upgrade while we're?" You know, oh, nice. while we're now, they have furniture and everything else, so it's going to be a little tricky. So we said, "Well, look, we can give you a kitchen, we can give you a bathroom, you know, we we can change the fixtures and change the windows, but we're not going to put new flooring in because." it's, it's, you know, we don't like, they've got a lot of furniture, so right. we'll wait to do it. But here, and we kind of have this matrix of like, Hey, if there's 10 things, for instance, that we would do in a value add, here's a dollar amount that all of these things are worth in terms of new rent. You know, Hey, maybe new appliances are worth a hundred bucks. Maybe, you know, a new kitchen's worth 250 bucks and, and sort of piecing that together to see what their, you know, what their new rate would be. So, so yeah, we're not, not going to do a full rehab, but kind of these partial renos, um, so that when they leave next year, all that's left to do is maybe the flooring, right? Or maybe retiling the bathroom walls or something like that. So nice. nice. Well, I asked this question as the last question of all of our guests. What is your asset management superpower? Um, I see my my superpower in asset management's leading with a steady hand. Um, that, that's a hard uh, hard thing to do sometimes. I mean, we have. Um, see a lot of new syndicators, you know, we get armed and dangerous and they can get out and do deals. And, and out of, I mean, it's hard, it's hard not to do a deal. It's not that anybody can go out and just do a you know, syndicated deal, but the real challenge is coming to actually running the, the stinking things and like being able to operate these deals at a high level. And I think for me, um, I feel the stress, right? Some of these deals don't always run the way we want. And we have, you know, real money, uh, our own money in these deals as well. So you want them to run well. And, and so, 
I think having been through a, a handful of economic cycles, I'm not worried about the small stuff. I mean, sure, like the rates affect us and, and you know, inflation affects us and a recession would affect us. We've been, I've been through a few of these things. Um, you know, I've been, been at it 21 years. I mean, there's always new sets of challenges, but, uh, but in the end, you know, it all works out, right? And, and take the big picture approach and, and you can't bury your head in the sand and be sort of Pollyanna about it. But, but you know, I just think a steady hand and, and having a big picture you're able to figure out any, you know, most any problem that comes your way in this business. Absolutely. And, and, and like you said, that 21 years of experience, I mean, you know, it, it doesn't happen overnight and that's the only way to get there is, you know, to have that set again by, by those years and years of experience. I earned these gray hairs. That's, there's one. <laughs> I got plenty too. <laughs> All right. Well, Jason, I appreciate you coming on and talking about uh, pivoting and uh, navigating some tough situations let the listeners know where they can get find out more about you and your company. Sure. Um, they can find me on all the social media. Um, you know, I'm, I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, you know, they can connect with me on uh, Calendly, just Calendly forward slash Jason Perro. If anybody wants to, to connect and talk, asset management, property management, um, any, any of that good stuff. Great. And do you guys have a website too, or if they should go oh, yeah, to? Yeah, perrorealestate.com. So I'm going through some, uh, putting some value out onto my website as well. We're actually revamping it, but, um, they, they can connect through us there as well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, this is Gary Lipsky signing off. I'll be back next week with another informative episode on the Real Estate Asset Management Podcast. To all of our listeners, thanks for joining us. And if you like this episode, please head over to iTunes or Stitcher and like, subscribe, and review this podcast as it will help us grow our audience and reach more people. And if you'd like to learn more about what we do at Break of Day Capital, head over to our website, breakofdaycapital.com and sign up for our newsletter and or fill out our investor application. We'll talk to you next week.